Thursday evening to you. It is a 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here as always with Weather for Weather Geeks. Lots of good news in the weather department over the next few days as things are about to turn around. We deserve it. It's been kind of, frankly kind of a crummy week of weather, but things are going to look really, really nice by the weekend, especially with temperatures near 70. Still plenty of interesting things to talk about this evening, including a look ahead at the longer range. But first, let's look backwards a little bit and uh, the precipitation has been lacking in much of the country over the last few months. And so over 80% of the lower 48 states uh, covered by either abnormally dry status or are in a drought. And in some places, it's, it's an extreme drought and an exceptional drought across parts of the High Plains and out across the uh, Central Valley of California as well. Now, back here at home, we're not that dry, but it has been a little bit drier than average overall in October particularly in our central viewing area. These are some uh, rain gauge values uh, taken by uh, weather observers who uh, have a manual rain gauge. They check it every day. They upload their data to the internet. If you're interested in becoming a, a weather observer with a real rain gauge that is uh, kind of uh, certified, if you will, it's the, it's the right rain gauge to have if you want to uh, report your totals to TV meteorologists, the National Weather Service, etc. Kokorah, C O C O R A H S dot org. That's the place to go to find out uh, more information. These rain gauges are pretty cheap. Uh, they're inexpensive, I should say. They're well made. They're not uh, cheaply made, but they are inexpensive, and it's it's you know, something we need more of. We need more people to have rain gauges that we have access to, uh, especially kind of in our northern viewing area. That's where we're particularly lacking uh, with. Uh, some uh, ground truth, if you will, when it comes to precipitation. At the Youngstown Warren Airport, where we get our official numbers, of course, we're now below average for the month, below average for the season, and we're below average for 2022 through today's date, uh, running a deficit of 3.01 inches at the airport. So yeah, we could use some more wet weather, even though the growing season is now done. It's not quite as, imp as important as it was a few uh, months ago, but still some... Uh, Precipitation wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. What also wouldn't be a bad thing is a little break from running our uh, furnaces. A lot of us are not happy about having to run our furnaces already in mid-October. Uh, the good news is we'll get a little bit of a break over the next several days. When we look at typical household electrical use, of course our appliances use up a fair amount, but by far and away the most electricity is used in both heating and cooling our homes. And we kind of want that uh, to hit that sweet spot, don't we? Where the furnace is not going to kick on during the day, and then you uh, build up enough warmth during the day in your house that even though it cools off at night, your furnace probably doesn't kick on. We're going to have some of that Goldilocks kind of weather uh, coming our way by the weekend and early next week. You'll notice energy consumption kind of bottoms out when temperatures are in the 60s to around 70. The curve starts heading back up, of course, as it gets hot, and we have to cool our homes, and it heads up again as we need to heat our homes as the outside air temperature gets below 60 degrees. But 60s to around 70, that's uh, that's what we want, and that's what we're going to get Saturday through at least Tuesday. In the meantime, a little weak disturbance heading through tonight. There's been some Virga on the radar, some light precipitation that isn't reaching the ground, nothing to concern ourselves with, and the sky will clear later on tonight. We actually have kind of a minor meteor shower that's peaking tonight and tomorrow night, and the, the moon is nearly new, and so it's not big and bright. Uh, temper your expectations here. If you're going to head out and ch try to check these out in the middle of the night tonight or before daybreak tomorrow morning, you might see a few per hour. You're not going to see a, you know, like the animation shows here. You're not going to see a bunch of them coming at you or anything like that. But you might be able to pick out a couple of meteors or a handful of meteors if you're lucky. If you find a good dark spot, best time to look would be the few hours before sunrise. All right, for the 10th week in a row, we're going to have great weather for high school football. We, we had a shower or two a couple weeks ago in some spots, but for the most part, it's been a dry high school football season, and uh, this week, no exception. Crystal clear tomorrow evening. Temperatures mid-50s at kickoff, about 50 by the end of the fourth quarter. Lots of sunshine for our Friday, not a cloud in the sky on Saturday, and Sunday looks fantastic as well. If you're running in the Youngstown Marathon, as I am uh, Sunday morning, Perfect running conditions. Temperatures uh, as the race kicks off at about 8. Uh, middle and upper 40s. We'll end up around uh, middle and upper 50s towards the end of the morning and heading for about 70 in the afternoons. So here's a look at the weekend forecast. 69 degrees on Saturday, 71 on Sunday. Now, if you have some not-so-fun things to do, like raking the leaves, weather will certainly be great for that this weekend. If you're going to be doing some fun activities, maybe heading to White House, getting some donuts, getting that pumpkin, uh, the weather looks a-okay as well. All right, let's talk about the longer range briefly as we wrap up tonight's video. And the uh, Climate Prediction Center, part of NOAA, part of the National Weather Service, put out not only their initial November outlook today, 
they updated their winter outlook, which we're going to talk about in this video. Here's a look at the November temperature uh, look across the lower 48 states. Pretty strong odds of an above average month temperature wise across parts of the southwest, places like Albuquerque, Denver, El Paso, even Dallas, maybe in New England as well. For us, I do think that the month will start out mild. First handful of days, maybe even the first week to 10 days of November will likely be, for the most part, warmer than average. It's the second half of the month that I'm seeing increasing signals in the modeling that it will turn colder than average. Of course, it always, usually anyway, turns colder as you go deeper into November, but compared to the average anyway, uh, the second half of the month may be a noticeable difference compared to the first half of November. The Precipitation outlook from uh, CPC also paints us kind of in that neutral or equal odds category. I do think that the month will not be especially wet, and I guess I wouldn't be surprised if some of this, some of these drier odds were shifted a little farther to the east when they do their updated November outlook in about 10 days. You know, I'm seeing uh, signs that November may be kind of like October in that it won't be exactly plentiful in the precipitation department. All right, a reminder, our winter forecast is coming out on Thursday, November the 17th, a little less than a month away. You can look for the very detailed version online, such as uh, you're watching right now, kind of a weather geek style um, winter forecast. This is the updated forecast from the Climate Prediction Center for the winter season. And meteorological winter is what we're talking about here, December, January, February. Uh, decent odds of a cooler than average season across the northern tier of states and up into Canada and pretty decent odds of a warmer than average season along the far southern U.S. and maybe crawling up the eastern seaboard as well. We are kind of in that neutral category. In other words, equal odds in the Climate Prediction Center's outlook for the winter season temperature-wise. Precipitation-wise, there's higher confidence in their outlook that it will be ab abnormally wet. And this is just a pretty classic La Nina look to this. And when you average together all the historical La Ninas, you get a map that kind of looks like this. Um, with wet weather favored in the Pacific Northwest, Northern Rockies, and around the Great Lakes and Upper Ohio Valley. Drier than average conditions with a weak subtropical jet favored in the South. Their drought's probably going to get worse. Um, so this is their outlook, not mine. Um, I agree with some parts of it. Some parts of it, I in my kind of early work in, in formulating uh, the winter forecast. Some of it I don't necessarily agree with uh, totally. Um, so you'll see my outlook coming up in a few weeks. Between now and November 17th, uh, we're going to take into account a lot of different things, not just La Nina. We're going to factor in what's going on in other oceans across the uh, world, what's going on in the atmosphere, even way up in the stratosphere. We're going to talk about the volcano that erupted back uh, early this year and what impacts it might have on the global uh, climate as we head into uh, the winter season in the northern hemisphere so we got a lot to look at and talk about that video will be very detailed and very long uh, we'll do a shorter version on tv that same evening on thursday november the 17th looking forward to that looking forward to uh more editions of weather for weather geeks next week we'll talk about our next chances for rain and much more next week in the meantime thanks for watching tonight and enjoy the rest of your thursday night